following that same formula, just like the three content hooks per video. And then we put out YouTube videos every day of the week, knowing that people are going to find them. They'll come into our email list and those become leads, but people fall off when it's just, it becomes hard that, that they are tired of filming videos or, um, and honestly, when you start doing this, just to set expectations, I will, I will tell you that the first four months or so are boring. Get your money up, get your money up. Marley, what's Hello. up, Team Jax HQ? How you doing today? Oh, we're good. How are you? I'm great. My name is Alex. I'm Mike's partner. I just wanted to jump on here and kind of help you out. So we're super excited to have you here, number one. Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you a wonderful introduction and then kind of like yeah, lead your thing. Cool. Sound good? Oh, sounds awesome. All right, guys. So we've got Marley Jax, who is actually so badass that they tried to say she faked her two comma club award. You have to be a pretty awesome person for that to happen. So number one, that's just crazy. She is going to come in here with you guys and she is going to drop a bunch of gems about how you can make money with your social media. And not only that, but Marley, we would love it if you could just share your story, talked about your, talk about your entrepreneurial journey, anything that you had trials and tribulations with, your two comma club award, and kind of just how you got here. Sure, that sounds awesome. Thank you. I love that. All right, guys, here you go. Marley Jax, get ready. Take the oh. stage. Cool. Hello. Hi, guys. Um, feel free to put questions in the chat at any time, and I'd love to do some Q&A and answer any questions when you have them as they come up. Um, I'd love to share with you a bit of my journey and um, also how I help clients to build evergreen lead generation machines in their business that then they can use to sell high ticket. Um, so my story is kind of funny. I started out as a, uh, a dental hygienist and I knew that, that wasn't what I wanted to be when I grew up. I knew that wasn't what I wanted my, uh, my career to be, but it was kind of something that I did in the meantime while I figured it out. Um, before that, I worked in radio and television. And although it was a really fun, exciting career, it was also unstable. So then I went into stable and boring. So because it was boring, I, um, between patients, I started doing their social media just for fun, just because I knew how to play around on Facebook. And um, some of the social media content that I was creating for them was doing really well. It would bring people into the office. And I, only, I created content based on things that I would enjoy consuming. I, I looked at what other people were, were creating on social media and I was bored of like the fun facts and the random little pictures or memes or whatever that can be entertaining. But when that's all it is, it's like, I still don't know anything about this person or about this business. So I created content and I pretty much just made stories about like, I don't know, the, the dental office goldfish or something about one of the hygienists or the dentists and just kind of shared the stories. Um, and then from there, my, uh, the IT guy at the dental office was like, Hey, you're, you're good at this. Could I refer you to one of my other clients to do, um, their social media for them? And I was like, sure, I, I guess. Well, next thing I know he referred me to all of his clients. And then I saw a way out for me to turn this into a career, into a business instead of uh, being a dental hygienist. Um, so I started making videos for myself because I was like, I think that video can uh, help me to reach uh, a bigger audience. And I had been hearing about, um, uh, about um, Google and YouTube and how if you utilize YouTube, people can like search and find your answers. And so sure enough, like within a few weeks, a few months, some of the videos that I made on, on YouTube that were just answering frequently asked questions that I was getting, some of those videos were getting seen from people on the other side of the world or from people that I'd never heard of before. And I was like, oh, how did that happen? And how can I do that again? And so I started making more of these videos um, and, and then those started blowing up. And then I wondered, can I do the same thing for my clients? Can I make videos for them that will help them to get clients all over the world? Um, so then I thought, I wonder if I can do this on purpose. And that's when I realized that YouTube, when utilized as the search engine it is, can become an evergreen lead generation machine. And here's the thing. Um, I have clients that I've worked with from, from startup to like multi-million dollar businesses. And the thing is, you don't need to have a big audience for this to work. I have a client that uh, we started with him and three weeks later, 
he, and just to give you some context, he is a church marketing agency. So he does marketing specifically for churches. Um, that's a very small niche. Like it's, it's pretty specific. Um, he made $11,000 in three weeks on YouTube and he only has 250 subscribers. So I want you to know that like there are YouTubers who have huge audiences that they don't know how to monetize. Did you know there's actually a stat from, um, from Fast Company that actually I'd love to ask you, how much do you think that uh, the majority of YouTubers make? And even if they have audiences of like thousands, hundred thousand. Probably 50K. Some six maybe. Figures. At least six figures. Surprisingly, 96% of YouTubers don't make enough to cross the poverty line. And the reason why is because they might be good content creators, but we are content creators who know how to leverage marketing in our content. So a lot of these content creators, their call to action is click the link or sorry, their call to action is click that subscribe button and subscribers are great. Having an audience is great. But last time I checked, I can't deposit likes and views and subscribers into my bank account. So I want you to, to really understand this, that you do not need a big audience to make great money. Again, my client, who's a church marketing agency, made $11,000 in three weeks with 250 subscribers. Um, so I'd love to know even, let me know who in the, in the chat, let me know um, how many of you guys are currently already using YouTube. Maybe you're making videos, maybe you're doing Facebook lives. Uh, Wade says I work in a dental a dentist office and I hate it. I feel your pain. I got out of there quickly. Hopefully I can teach you some stuff that'll help you to, uh, to grow your business as well. So um, one of the big things that was a huge shift for me was realizing that YouTube is a search engine. When you have a question, when you have a problem you need solved, yes, a lot of us go to our moms, but a lot of us go to YouTube, to Google, we type in our question and guess what? That answer can come up in the form of an awesome video because YouTube is owned by Google. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world owned by Google, the largest search engine. So if we even, maybe I'll just open up YouTube right now and uh, show you some examples. If I go to, um, I'm going to go into YouTube, I'll share my screen in a second. If I go to YouTube and I type in, hopefully my internet will hold up for us. Um, if I type in Canva, Canva is a graphic design software. And if you go into Google Keyword Planner, you can see some of the stats to see that Canva, the search term is searched between one to 10 million times per month. So imagine if, look at this, hang on a second. Once it, uh, once it shows up here, let me type in how to use Canva. There's my video right there, close to the top, 641,000 views. And that video, look at this. I made this video four years ago. I don't know about you, but I have never come across a Facebook Live that I did four years ago. Like when you do a Facebook Live, for me, it like disappears within a few days, a few hours. And let me show you another example of a client of mine. Um, he talks about team communication. And his video right here from six years ago is ranking at the top 32,000 views. And he made this video six years ago. And here's the thing in those videos, we have a strong call to action that's saying, click the link below for my some sort of freebie that we can get them on our email list and continue to nurture and build that relationship with our audience. So you can be putting money into Facebook ads. You can be doing cold calling. You could be um, networking and all these things that are so valuable and still are going to help you grow your business. But do you see how you can make a video once position it on YouTube, the way that people are searching for it in the search engines. And that video can become real estate attention that you own instead of attention that you rent. And what I mean by that is like, if you posted content on any other social media platform and for it to stay at the top of the timelines, you have to keep paying for that ad space for it to keep showing up there. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Right. <laughs> I thought so too. Um, marketing. Yeah. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions so far? Cause I'd love to, and I'd love to know like, what, what, what do you guys all do um, that I can maybe do some specific training on how to be able to help you in your business? Uh, I've been wanting well, to do YouTube for a long while, but I'm far too nervous. Oh no, but it's so worth it. Go ahead, Alex. You're good. You're good. So this is a group of a lot of, everyone's a hustler, young hustler, a lot of sales guys on the up and up. Some guys are doing really well. 
And they're all using social media to make themselves more well-known, obviously. So I think what you could do is maybe tell them some, some strategies of how they could post and maybe use like a call to action or something like that to get more influence. And I know you talk about nurturing leads and taking them to your funnel. If you want to explain more about that, I'm sure they would love to know. Yeah, definitely. And as, as salespeople, you guys know the importance and the power in having a perpetually filled pipeline that you're not always having to be the ones to go reach out to them. How amazing is it when you have inbound leads coming to you saying, Hey, I'm interested in what you have to offer, what you have to do. There is a big difference in the level of client or prospect that will come to you after they've seen a YouTube video or two. It's like, they already know you. They're coming to you saying, Hey, I watched that video. I heard your story. I loved what you had to say. When someone comes to you cold on maybe a Facebook message or a Facebook ad, they're, they're just not as familiar with you, but here you can have people who could even binge watch your content. Yes. No, like, and trust. Um, so there's a few different elements that are really important in building your YouTube channel. And again, it's not about building your YouTube channel to subscribers because you can have a small amount of subscribers and, uh, and to get this. So, um, there's a few different elements that are super important is first of all, your, uh, your content and the quality of your content is I'm more focused on the quality of the message in your content. When people ask me, what's the, what's the most, uh, what's the best camera to use? My answer is always the one you have. How many of you guys have an iPhone or any kind of phone with a camera attached to your hip? Pretty much. That is all you need. Uh, Lady Gaga and Selena Gomez. Their, their, some of their recent music videos were filmed on an iPhone. So if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. A lot of people get too hung up in the, the technical stuff of like, oh, well, I have to have this fancy stuff. No, you totally don't. When I first started making YouTube videos, I lived in my grandfather's basement. I propped up my iPhone on a stack of books and I used a lamp with no lampshade for lighting, or I stood in front of a, a window for natural light, which is where I am right now. So this is natural lighting just from windows. So totally you guys can bootstrap it and don't let any of those excuses hold you back. Cause it's so much more important to be able to get your message out to, there to the people who need you and who can become potentially paying customers. I always say that the transformation is in the transaction. And when you can reach your audience like this, and show them the value that you can provide and then they can become a paying customer. That's how you're going to go, go out and change lives. So first of all, filming your content. So, so important that you, you just do it. I, I know that there's a lot of people that say, well, I'm afraid of the camera. And let's just be real about that for a second, that you're not afraid of the camera because the camera is a piece of metal and plastic, right? We're not afraid of that. But if we can be real about, we're afraid of judgment. We're afraid of stepping out of our comfort zone. Absolutely. That's, there's, there's no, there's no growth in the comfort zone. There's no comfort in the growth zone. But when you know that this could become an evergreen lead generation machine, you just got to decide what is it, what, what, what are you going to do? Like, it's hard. Yes. Filming content, creating YouTube content, putting yourself out there is hard. So is being broke. So is running Facebook ads that don't work. So is cold calling. So it's just you guys got to pick your hard. So filming, we've gotten that out of the way. We're ready to film you guys. You guys feel a little bit motivated thinking like you could do this. I'll oh, share yeah. with you some of the, yeah. uh, some of the strategies for how to film this. So I mentioned that the, the quality of the content is what's most important. I'm not so much worried about, even if you're lighting, if you go back to the beginning of my YouTube channel, you can see some videos where I didn't know where to put the, the phone and I put it a little bit lower. So my eyes look like they're closed, whatever that video is still up there. It shows people that I'm human. It shows people how I've grown through it. Um, but I'm going to share with you some of our, um, some of our scripting system. So what's really important is that you have three content hooks per video. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So when my clients come to me and they're like, Marley, I don't know how to script out videos. I'm not asking you to script out videos. I think that actually scripting out your videos too much, um, can become a hindrance. And it's actually, um, it's actually quite distracting if you have a script, because it takes away that part of your personality that people can just come to love you, even the, the little mistakes or, or, um, you know, messing up your words. It just, it shows that you're natural. And of course there's editing. There is no way I'm not trying to be a one take wonder here. Um, it is just, it is, it is totally simple to just, all you need to do is come up with three content hooks per video. So I'm going to give you an actual, uh, example of that. 
So there's a few different steps to outlining your video. So in your video, you're going to, first of all, you'll introduce it. And that's like the first five to 10 seconds. We want to keep it simple. And if you think about people's attention spans, we have short attention spans. Um, so you've got to capture their attention pretty quickly. If you, if you don't capture their attention quickly enough, they'll be like, whatever, I don't know what this video is about. I'm out of here. So when you introduce the video, you're introducing what the video is about and why should they care? And you also want to repeat the title of the video in the intro. So I'm going to give you an example. I have a client, uh, Christy Code Red. She's in weight loss, which I'll also tell you, weight loss is a very saturated niche, right? There's tons of different weight loss coaches, weight loss programs, but she has a, she just follows the script outline. She puts her videos out on YouTube, answering questions and, and responding to things the way that people are searching for them in the search engine. So I'll give you an example. Maybe her video is, why am I dieting and exercising and not losing the weight? So remember in the intro, we want to repeat the title in the intro. So maybe she says, if you're stuck in a weight loss plateau, you've come to the right place. If you've ever asked yourself, why am I dieting and exercising and not losing the weight? See, I've repeated the title in this, in the intro. I'm here to answer that question. The reason might not be what you think. Let's get to the bottom of it in today's video. Now, so that's the intro. All you have to do is repeat the title and just kind of introduce them into the video in a very conversational, natural way. Now, here's where the three content hooks come in. And this is what's important for retaining your audience. Retaining your audience is so important because if people come to your video and they watch 10 seconds and leave, do you think you've actually generated that lead? No. Do you think if they come to the video and no watch it at all, that YouTube is going to put your content in front of more people? No, YouTube is going to put your content in front of more people. They're going to boost your rankings and the algorithms when they see that people are watching your content. If there's like a 10 minute video and people are watching 10 seconds, YouTube is going to go, well, that video is not valuable. If they're watching like six, seven, eight, nine minutes, YouTube is going to go, this is a video that more people need to see and put in front of people. So your biggest goal is to get people watching and to be telling those stories and overcoming false beliefs in a way that they're continuing to watch and led through all the way to the call to action. So we create the video and we have the three content hooks at the front of that video. So in this, and, and what I mean by hook is something that's going to keep people on the edge of their seat, something that's going to pose uh, a question mark in their mind to think I have to keep watching this so that I can learn more about whatever this topic is. And if I click off, I'm going to miss all this information. It's almost like when you're watching a really great TV show and like right before it hits, it goes to commercial break. There's that big like cliffhanger and you're like, oh, what happens next? When you have that at the beginning of your video, it keeps people watching all the way through. So we come up with three content hooks per video. Another great way to study content hooks is to look at news headlines. Even like you think of the, the tabloids, like you'll never believe what Prince Harry said to Oprah. Prince Harry is like so big in the tabloids right now. So that's a really good one to study. Okay, let me get to the three content hooks examples. So the, the title of the video um, for this one, I said, uh, Christy's example of why am I dieting and exercising and not losing the weight? So her three content hooks might be in this video, we're going to go over the number one biggest lie in weight loss. It's one that we've all heard and no longer have to believe. So I want the question mark in their mind to be the number one biggest lie. There's a lie I've been lied to. I need to know what this is. So they're going to want to watch to find out the second content hook. She'll say, then we're going to cover um, the mistakes you might be making in your weight loss. Most of my clients come to me when they're stalled in their weight loss. I give them these three strategies and they hit their weight loss goal faster than ever. So what I hope that they get from that hook is like, I've been stalled in my weight loss. She tells them three things and they hit their weight loss goal faster than ever. I want to know what those three things are. So they're already hooked in by the number one biggest lie. Then they need to know what are these three things that are going to get them to their goal. And if they click off the video sooner than that, then they're never going to know. So we want to keep them hooked. And then the third hook, maybe she says something like, and last we'll cover how to lose 10% of your body weight every month without shakes, pills, diet foods, or even exercise. That's part of her, her messaging. So do you see how there's those three content hooks that are going to leave a question mark in people's minds to go, I need to keep watching this video. This is, this is intriguing. And then when you're filming the video, all you do is you go through those three content hooks. So you answer the first one. The first one is about the number one biggest lie. So she'll just talk about that for like two or three minutes till she's done. 
then move into the second content hook. She'll talk about that for a few minutes until she's done. Then the third one, she'll talk about that for a few minutes until she's done. We also want to put engagement breaks in the video. So that's where we ask people to like and comment and subscribe. You'll notice that if you're watching people on YouTube, you'll notice that a lot of people wait until the end of the video to say that at the end of the video, they go, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, subscribe. I don't want you to do that at the end of the video. Here's why. If at the end of the video, people know that it's the end of the video, they already mentally check out. They're done. They're not going to hear your call to action. We want to get them as far, as far along to the end of the video as possible. So we ask for those likes and comments and subscribes in the middle of the video when they know there's still more to come and when they're really engaged. So maybe in the middle of um, between content hook number one and two, she could say, hey, were you someone that believed in that weight loss lie? Did you think that exercise was necessary to lose weight? Let me know in the comments below, what, uh, diet, what diets have you tried that have failed you? And so she asks a question in the middle to get to prompt that engagement that's gonna get people to comment. When you have people commenting, again, the platforms are gonna see that this is a valuable video and put your content in front of more people. Um, the other engagement break that you could do is to ask for subscription. So she could say, hey, before I get into how to lose 10% of your body weight every month, um, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel. I put up videos like this every single week to help you lose the weight and keep it off. Okay. And then she goes into the next piece of content. So again, don't like, you don't want to lose momentum at the end of the video. Cause again, if people know that this is the end of the video, they're going to mentally check out and leave. Um, and then at the end of the video, once you've completed, you, you've given all that value, then you go into the call to action, but you want to keep the momentum. Don't sound like you're winding down the video, um, or else your audience is going to click off. So just all you do is you then can promote a lead magnet or refer your audience to another video. So you could, she could say something in this one, like, Hey, now that you know why you're not losing the weight, do you want to know the secret to help you to lose 10, 10 pounds this month? I made a whole video on it, or, or I have a whole video series on it. Click the link below to get that. And that's then going to lead people into her email list or into another video so she can continue to nurture that relationship with people. I've been talking for a long time. I want to know, is this making sense for you guys? Do you have any questions? Is this my, I want to see you guys creating videos like this. Oh, this is great. It's great content. I uh, love this it. This is helpful. Subscribe button. This is super cool. And it's relatable. Look, we're all sales guys, right? So yeah. when it comes down to it, when you're talking about hooks and engagement, like all that stuff, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You're really breaking fun. it down really well. The thing that I find that a lot of people, um, they fall off at is because it's hard. And I, I already gave you the spiel about like, you just got to pick your heart. It, yes, it's hard to film videos. You know what I do is I actually film, I batch film one day a month. Um, I do five YouTube videos a week because that's how much I know that this is so valuable. If I put a, a, out a video every week, that becomes my real estate. If I had the money or the time to invest in like houses that I knew that were going to make me more money, this is like the equivalent with owning attention online. So I put out five YouTube videos a week because I know that this is going to lead to me making six and seven figures easily because it's an evergreen lead generation. Means. So I film one day a month and I film 20 videos in a day. And sure, that's like, that's a busy day. I film for, um, for, for, from nine to five, 20 videos. It takes me about 15, 15 to 20 minutes per video. Um, following that same formula, just like the three content hooks per video. And then we put out YouTube videos every day of the week, knowing that people are going to find them. They'll come into our email list and those become leads. Um, but people fall off when it's just, it becomes hard um, that, that they are tired of filming videos or, um, and honestly, when you start doing this, just to set expectations, I will, I will tell you that the first four months or so are boring. The first four months you're building your relationship with the algorithm. And unfortunately, I see people who quit when they're so close. We have clients like one after another that they, and we, we set this expectation from the beginning. We're like, Hey, for the first four months, you're probably going to be bored. And you're going to be like, where, where is everything? And that's not to say you're not getting results. I just told you about my client that made 3000 or sorry, made uh, $11,000 in three weeks with a small YouTube channel. Um, so you're still generating leads from the beginning, but we see client after client, they hit four or five months we see this hockey stick spike because it's like YouTube sees that you're serious about this, that you're building the relationship with the algorithm, that you're actually like 
doing the work and putting the content out and client after client, we see these YouTube channels go from like zero to a hundred thousand in less than a year. We see them making six and seven figure revenue. Um, and it's like, it's, it works. It's hard work, but it works if you do. I have a question. Um, yeah, I see some questions here. That's great. How long are your videos? Um, we want the average length of the videos to be 10 minutes. And again, when you're following the content hooks formula, it's very simple to make 10 minutes. And it's important that we have length on the YouTube videos because YouTube values length and they're going to promote creators who keep people on the platform. If you have one minute long videos, and even if people watch hundred percent of it, they want people who are, who are watching for longer amounts of time. So they're gonna boost videos that have more length. So I'm glad you asked, it's about 10 minutes. And again, when you follow the content hooks, it's pretty, pretty simple to, to meet 10 minutes. Now, if you have a six minute video and like you said everything you can say, and it's like spicy and you got lots of flavor in there and it's awesome. I'm not gonna tell you to like ramble on about nonsense for four minutes, just cut it off there. But you want your, your videos to on average be around 10 minutes. Uh, what do you recommend to use for lead capture? Um, so I hope I'm understanding your qu question correctly, but we have lead magnets in the links of every single video. So really click the link below for this thing. It brings them to a, a landing page. We use ClickFunnels where they can opt in for, maybe it's like an ebook or a video series or um, a webinar or something like that, that then gets them into the email list, provides them value. And then we also have a follow-up sequence, whether that's emails or um, they come into a Facebook group where we can nurture that relationship further um, and then be able to, uh, to potentially maybe bring them into um, a, a paid program or get them on a sales call so we can sell them into something high ticket. Um, so do you have an ebook then? I have different things. I have um, video series. I have a webinar. Um, I have I've I've done eBooks in the past, but I find that I personally I, I create content that I like to consume. I like to consume more by video, so okay. I create I, my lead magnets or videos. Um, this question from Trey: You say YouTubers don't make much money, but how are they affording these nice cars and houses? I said ninety six percent of YouTubers are not passing the poverty line, so. Some people are doing really well. Um, there are some YouTubers that have great audiences that know how to monetize, that they're doing really well with their brand deals and sponsorships. But a lot of YouTubers only rely on YouTube AdSense, which is, or, or brand deals, which brand deals, you still don't have control of that. Like you still have to negotiate with a company and you make a percentage maybe. Um, and then you don't have control over that marketing either. Um, when people rely on just YouTube AdSense, meaning people who watch their videos and like YouTube pays you a few pennies before that, I can tell you right now, my channel has um, 27,000 subscribers. I've been working on that for, for a while and I have a seven figure business. I'm not relying on YouTube AdSense, but it's a bonus. Like I get, I get good money from it, but it's like a thousand dollars a month. So certainly that wouldn't be enough to cross the poverty line if that was all I was relying on. So um, we want to, Basically. take control of that and have lead magnets that bring them into your own list so you can sell them your own products and services. Casey, what you got? How, how do you um, keep coming up with content? I mean, like, cause I used to make a bunch of videos, you know, and I was pretty uh, religious with it, but you know, I feel like even the, though I know um, I would always have new questions and new things to answer. I feel like there would, I would, I would always run dry, you know, at some point. So what do you do to keep, you know, coming up with new, new ideas, new content? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. So we, there's there's a few different strategies. We use a tool called SEMrush and you can just type in like any keyword and it'll like, like populate with tons of different search terms or things that people are actually searching for. The other thing is you can go straight to YouTube. Let me actually show you if YouTube is still open. Uh, I closed it, let me just open it again. Um, if you go right to YouTube and you can use their search bar to do this, um, let's say that I have a dog training client, how to train your dog. We'll just, just watch for a second, how to train your dog to walk on a leash, how to train your dog to attack, to sit, to poop in one place, to lay down, look at all those video ideas, 
all right there. You can make a video on every single one. So type in things about your industry or things that people are searching for. You can even look at what are your competitors making videos about that then you can do a similar video with your own stories, with your own spin on it. Like, honestly, you'll never run out of content ideas. And also you can look for ideas within six degrees of separation of what you're talking about too, because that can still lead into your expertise. That's hard. That's hard. Thank you. You're welcome. I got a question for you. You said that you're generating like a thousand bucks a month off your YouTube, but it's not your main source of income because you got a seven figure business. So basically what you're doing is you're using YouTube organically to get everyone into your call to actions, to get them into your email campaigns, your funnel, your Facebook groups, all that stuff. And then you're selling them on your product. Yes. So the YouTube AdSense, that's like a source of revenue. I might have a brand deal that could be a source of revenue. I could have an affiliate link that gives me a source of revenue, but my biggest source of revenue is having people come through to my call to action that then I sell into my own products and services that I have the control of. And they're my client now. They're, they're, that's my customer that I can continue to build that relationship with. And let's say if someone comes into, um, they come into my email list, they, they, they take a lead magnet, I have a video series that they come into and I sell them a $47, I have a $47 program that teaches everything that I'm teaching you right now. And then from there, you know, I build that relationship with them. And then maybe in the future, they join my coaching program for a few thousand dollars. And then in the future, maybe they hire me for, for like $10,000. Like, look at the customer value of that. It wasn't just me sending out a link and getting a percentage of a sale. I actually get to build a relationship with that customer and send them from low ticket to high ticket. And that's exactly what I want you guys to do is to be able to sell your own products and services that it's not just someone that you're making like a few dollars off of here or there. Like you can bring them all the way from, from hello to high ticket. Well, I got a question. Um, so you said that with your YouTube account, you made with the following, you, I'm sorry. I don't know how to establish the initial following for a YouTube account. Because with the algorithm for YouTube, you have to be pretty relevant for your content to get out there into the field and for people to start seeing it to be, it to be popular on top of the charts. But if you just have like one subscriber or a new account, how will just simply creating videos with the long, like, lengthy video is gonna be enough to put you on the charts for YouTube algorithm. It's not about your subscribers. It's not about your subscribers, it's about your content. And you could be creating content that people are searching for. And I, I if you have a strong call to action in your video that you're saying, hey, go click the link for this because this is gonna give you more of the solution that you came here for. Just because someone doesn't subscribe to your channel doesn't mean that they haven't become a lead for you. Like I would much rather have them on my email list and as a customer than them hit, the, hit that subscribe button. Again, like most of the, um, the YouTubers that we see, their call to action is just subscribe. Like they don't know how to acquire that lead. Um, and so you can have videos, even as a brand new channel, I build brand new channels from scratch to hundred thousand subscribers and to six and seven figures that we've had clients go from zero to a hundred thousand in a year. Like you got to start somewhere, but it's creating content and people can find you. They're not finding you because they're following you. They're finding you because they're searching for the content that you then answered in your video. Okay. Thank you. You answered my question. And you said four months is what it takes to kind of get on the algorithm. But with that four months of getting on the algorithm, it has nothing to do with how many subscribers you have. It's all about the content. No, again, my client that has 270 subscribers, church marketing agency, he found leads, like leads came to him completely organically because they were searching for things for how to grow their business, how to grow their church. Uh, maybe they searched for how to invite more people to church this Sunday. I'm totally making it up. Um, and they found his video and he provided value and said, Hey, click the link below. I have another free thing for you that brings them into the email list. Maybe at some point they got on a phone call and he sold them into his coaching programs or into his services. And again, small channel, like started from scratch. Love that. That's a small niche and it's backed by Jesus. He must be doing pretty well. Yes, <laughs> certainly. Um, let me keep checking these questions. Is YouTube okay with using affiliate links? Absolutely. There's a lot of YouTubers who make tons of money with affiliate links. Um, and that's a great revenue source for you. Uh, and again, I'm just recommending that you have like multiple different revenue sources that you can have YouTube AdSense, you can have affiliate links, you can have brand deals, but you can also be generating leads for your own products and services that you sell. 
Um, what would initial promotion for the channel look like and what we, should we expect for the first four months? So you will be having people finding your YouTube channel organically. Um, and some of those leads may turn into clients or turn into sales from the beginning. Um, but it's at the four months that we really see the momentum take off. So I just want to clarify for you, that doesn't mean that it's like, there's nothing happening in the first four months, but just to know that just like anything you're growing, you're like, you're going through those growing pains. You're learning your voice. YouTube is getting to know you in the algorithm. Um, so initial promotion is you can just, you can be creating your videos and titling them based on how people are searching for them. But of course, any promotion that you can do to drive your current audience to your channel is going to be helpful. So maybe you want to post on Facebook, you can do some Instagram stories or wherever your audience is to say, Hey, I just posted this brand new YouTube channel or this new video, go check it out. You can even show like a little teaser of it. Maybe you take like a funny, I don't know, like 15 or 30 second piece to go, Hey, go click this and go watch the full video. Um, we actually have, um, I, I don't know if I'm, I have a, a program, if anyone's interested, like where we give you done for you campaigns to be able to promote your YouTube channel. And it's, it's $47. It's very inexpensive to help you get started. So if I'm able to, I can share that with them later. Yeah, for sure. See, she wants to get you on the drip guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, a to. lot of them rent cars and houses for content. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those YouTubers. There was a really good question on there. I think Chano asked, does it matter or do you feel like you have to be specific with the like genre and area of content that you're posting? Or can you post different things? For example, like music, cars, all that different stuff. Whatever matches you, the demographic that you're speaking to. So I speak about marketing. I speak about growing your business. And the ways that I can do that is through social media, through email marketing, through videos, through YouTube. I can talk about building a team because that has to do with growing your business. But if I all of a sudden started talking about how to change the oil in your car, my audience would be like, what the heck? I didn't sign up for that. So I, it, it, you can totally expand, but just think of your audience if they're going to be like, this is what, this is what I'm here for. If they're going to be like, what the heck are they changing their career? I guess I'll unsubscribe because this isn't what I came for. So just think of your audience when it comes to what, what kind of content you're creating. Love that. There's another, uh, good, there's another good one on there. Where does the biggest income come from on your YouTube traffic? Um, so that's actually, that's, that's such a good thing for you to look for because you want to see that your YouTube traffic is coming from external. If it's coming from external, you know, that people are finding you organically. Um, but you want a good variation. You want people who are subscribed to your channel to be watching it. You want to see that people are coming from YouTube search. You want to see that people are coming from, um, from Google search from maybe other people sharing your content. Um, but yeah, if you have that external traffic that shows you that people are finding you organically and the, the more that you can get that, we have a client, um, Steven Larson, that he just said 40% of his traffic is coming from external. So what that means is he's generating a new audience. 40% of his leads coming in are people who hadn't heard from him before. So we want to be bringing in a new audience and also nurturing your existing audience. Love that. Love that. Guys, got any more questions? Otherwise, I have I have kind of a question for her. No? All right. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so I noticed when you were searching for things earlier in the, the search bar, it was uh, on the side of it. It was a way to see, like, um, like how many people were searching for that. When I search things on YouTube, that doesn't show up for me. Is that, like, a special uh, thing you got going on for that? Yep, that's a Google Chrome extension called uh, keywords everywhere. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. All right, Marley. So when it comes to you, obviously being a successful person, you got a two comma club award, you're generating a lot of money, you're a successful independent woman. What are, and I know these guys are going to want that, right? We're all obsessed with success. We all want to know what everyone's doing. What are some of your like key habits and things are part of your routine and development that are things that you do like frequently and also things that have kind of helped you accelerate your growth as a successful entrepreneur? Cool. I love that question. Um, I certainly have routines that, um, that are focused on, you know, my creativity and, and serving my clients. That's some of the most important things to me is that I want to love what I'm doing and I want to love my clients. Like I, I love that the things that I'm helping them build or, or work through in their business are things that I've gone through myself. So I can actually come from a place of, of sympathy, of, of awareness and knowing that like, I've been through that, I've been through that and I have the answers and I can help you through that. Um, but to make sure that I'm showing up my best, I certainly need like 
you know, self-care and, um, and I, I need my mentors around me too, to learn from. I have, I have mentors like Russell Brunson and Alex Sharpin and people that I want to stand on the shoulders of giants to be able to, you know, cause some people say like, you can't, uh, you can't cut corners. You kind of can, when you have people that have done it, they can show you, here's how to do it. I have, I have paid my dues. I have also paid the opportunity cost of not just hiring the people to show me the right way to do it. Um, and so learning, having, having, um, a routine that includes and carves out time for me to learn and grow. That's so important to me. And also being in a community, like look at all you guys here, like there's around a hundred people on here today. Yeah, what if a like everyone here, you guys have already made the decision to show up for yourselves, to contribute to a community and to do the work. Like, it seems like you guys are already off to an incredible start and you have, you have good support around you. So I applaud you for that. Love that. Love that. And how long have you been on this journey? How long did it take you to get to where you are now? And then maybe what are some of the things that you really struggled with that you would give advice to other people not to do or things that you did struggle with that kind of failed you forward? What were some of your hardships? How long has it taken you to get to where you are right now? Um, so I was a dental hygienist in 2016 when I started to do this on the side, uh, to do social media on the side. So I was a dental hygienist in 2016, started doing this as a side hustle. 2017 is when I left dental hygiene full-time and went into this full-time. Uh, 2018 was when I went to my first marketing event, Funnel Hacking Live, where I learned about sales funnels and, uh, and generating leads and the two comma club award. And that's where I started to see, look at these people who are just like me, who came from nine to five jobs and the, you know, what society calls normal, um, that, that are doing these things that are unheard of. It's like the four minute mile, like, look at these people who are doing it. Maybe I can too. So 2018 was my first, um, funnel hacking live that introduced me to that and showed me that I could set my sights higher. 2019, I made, uh, I got my first two comma club award, um, made a million dollars and then 2020 made my second two comma club award. Um, but of course that wasn't like overnight success. It was a big struggle. Um, I went through a divorce at that time too. I, I grew and grew out of, I guess, how, how do I word that? Um, when I got married, you know, he had signed up for, uh, being with a, a dental hygienist and we just, we grew apart in that I pursued business and just wasn't. So of course there was the, the personal growth that you go through as an entrepreneur and guys, entrepreneurship is a game of personal development. And it's a game that I want to keep playing even when it's hard. Um, another big struggle that I went through, but was a huge learning experience was I kept investing in myself, wanting to, uh, to grow the business. I built a, a big team. I was trying to run Facebook ads that I, I wasn't doing it well enough. I was, I was new to it. So of course failing forward, um, but also failing into a big, uh, pile of debt. And I got into so much debt, you no know, thinking that I'm going to, I'm going to be able to, I'm so determined. I know I'm going to get there. I'll just keep putting a little bit of money into debt, but I know I'm going to make it one day and I'll be able to pay it all off. But I was in a position where I was just, I wasn't succeeding. I, I was failing more than I was succeeding um, and got myself into a place where um, I could have like lost everything. So I had to, I ended up having to fire most of my team and start from scratch. And that was the opportunity that taught me how to do so much of what I do because I had no backup plan. I, I couldn't, I, I had to just, there we go. Um, it just, my back was against the wall and I had to learn how to, how to do what I do. So, um, I would recommend to live within your means and yes, it's important to invest in yourself, but also to know your numbers and not put yourself in that much danger. Like I did at that time. For sure. For sure. I mean, I agree too, but like, I know quite a few successful people and at least 75% of them have gone to debt or been bankrupt trying to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. I guess another question. So I'm asking a bunch of personal questions because I Love want it. these guys to really know the struggles and the reality of what it is to get to where someone like you is. Yeah. When you went through that and I understand Facebook ads because I've been in that same position. I've had them work too, but definitely spend a lot of money. 
Where did you find yourself having to let go of your whole team, putting yourself in debt and then reinventing yourself and recreating that Mm -hmm. resilience factor that you had? Like, what was the drive behind just getting back up, moving forward and actually being able to accomplish what you've done right now? I mean, a big part of it is deciding, being like, I didn't come far, come this far just to come this far. I'm not going to go back to dental hygiene. That's, I'm not happy there. And sometimes you have times where you're like, I can't afford to do this, but I also can't afford not to do this. Um, so I had to. I was like, I am going to keep working at this. I'm going to reinvent and rebuild. And that kind of moment where you have your back up against a wall, it teaches you what you're made of because you don't have, like, you, you become creative in ways you wouldn't have thought of before. It also forces you to be in positions that are uncomfortable that, that force you to grow. Um, in that time, I was lucky that uh, we had some lead magnets that were working that were generating sales calls for me. And before that, I had had a salesperson who was getting on those sales calls, although not closing them, not making the money. So that was kind of a blessing in disguise that, well, this person wasn't generating money, but I was paying them. So let's let them go and let me take it over. And that taught me how to sell because I got on the calls with people and I would hear the language they were speaking. I would hear what were their pain points? What were their desires? What did they want so badly? What solution were they asking me to provide for them? And then that taught me how to communicate with them. Like, what are the things that they really want? If I'm telling them, Hey, you need to grow a big YouTube channel. It's going to be so good. But they're like, I need to generate leads and be able to make money in my business. I'm like, well, YouTube does that. Oh, I have to word it like that. YouTube is going to become an evergreen lead generation machine that can help you sell six and seven figures. Oh, I was just, I wasn't speaking the right language and that taught me how to. So that big fail was the click into what you needed. Yeah. Love that. Tyrell, you got a question? How you doing, Miss Marley? Hello, how are you? you know this nice guy. to meet you. Nice mm-hmm. to meet you. Um, so you had mentioned uh, as being an entrepreneur, it's a lifelong journey. Uh, you need to be a continued uh, student of lot, you know, of learning and professional uh, uh, development, no, personal development. No. Um, uh, question for you: What three books would you recommend that you think is important that every entrepreneur should read? Hmm. That, oh, my you question. Have, that, that you may have um, realized help you out. Yeah, I love that. Um, I Expert Secrets from Russell Brunson. That's like the, the marketing Bible. So that one for sure. Um, the entrepreneurial personality type by Alex Sharfin. It's a really small one and a quick read, but it'll tell you more about yourself than, than you ever knew. It might give you permission in ways that you didn't know that you could have before. Um, and then I read a book recently that, uh, what's it called? It's by Bob Iger. He was the CEO of Disney, um, ride of a lifetime. And it's his memoir and his journey, his lessons in being the CEO of Disney for however many decades he was. Um, And the lessons and also his storytelling in it that just keeps you hooked. It's a great, it's a great book to read, to learn the lessons and and the leadership, but also to see how he tells the stories and keeps you captivated. Okay. Can you repeat the second one? The, uh, the Entrepreneurial Personality Type by Alex Sharfin. Thank you. You guys got any questions for her? Yes. You, you mentioned that you did invest in yourself. Uh, what was the most worthwhile investment you made? Um, That's a good question. Yeah, great question. Uh, growing a team. Growing a team is is always the best investment, and of course, it's there's challenges. I've I've hired the wrong people. I've I've had to hire and fire people. And what I mean by the wrong people, like the I also depend on process more than people. Um, and if if something is is happening that's wrong on the team, I look to myself first and the culture that I'm building and the processes I'm providing. Um, and so hiring a team to be able to help me, like. I only have so many hours in a day and I know where my zone of genius lies and I can hire people because you can't, you can't buy more time, but you can buy more team and have an incredible culture around you that are also excited about, you know, growing the business and and achieving the goals together. Um, So investing in a team in people. Um, But I've also uh, joined masterminds and courses. Um, uh, Russell Brunson is a mentor of mine. Alex Sharfin is a mentor of mine. I, I joined their programs and they taught me about marketing and about leadership and about um, 
about growing growing a team. Casey. Thank you. Yo, um, if you could if you could go back to your 18 year old self, what would you do differently? I wonder I've thought about that. Like I wonder if I would tell myself not to go to dental hygiene school, but like that's what that's what got me to here. I don't know if I would have found it earlier. I guess I probably would have, because I, I grew up with probably what a lot of us did. Like you go to school, you get good grades, you go to university or college, you get a good salary job and you are happy with your two weeks vacation every year and you save for retirement and that's it. Um, so I probably would have encouraged myself to learn business and be more entrepreneurial earlier. I feel like I always had that pull on me like there's something more that I want to do and there's 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 something that uh something different that I want to be when I grow up but I just didn't know what that was um so yeah I'd probably just I'd probably want to get into business and learning and mentorship sooner easy thank you yeah cool question love that Kenny <clears throat> question this is all awesome by the way thank you yeah you're welcome um, what are some things for like a new channel that you would kind of have a person focus on for starting out like tips and tricks? We have like four steps to building your YouTube channel and, um, Alex, if it's okay, can I share with them like a, a oh, link yeah. that they can? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I have a program that I'd love to tell you guys all about. And we made it like the most affordable thing that if you do this, like I've said to people, if you do this with me every month for a year, your life and your business will be unrecognizable. I have sold my, my program. If people hire us and they come out to our studio in Salt Lake city, we charge $10,000 a month. I've basically taken what we charge $10,000 a month in helping people build their six and seven figure YouTube channels into a $47 a month membership. Uh, it's called the VIP code and VIP stands for video impact profit, because what I want to help you do is make a legacy impact and longevity profit. Here's the problem that I had when I used to sell courses is that I hate, it breaks my heart when people join a course and never implement it. When I'm like, oh my God, if you just do this, like, I know it will answer all of your problems. So what I've done is I created this membership where we take you through, we're like, there's four steps. All you have to do is just do them over and over and repeat. Like we call it an impact routine. We're like, there's these four steps. That's all you have to do. But we've also gamified the process. So when you join, we have all these done for you campaigns that like you just plug in your stuff and you go. And when you do, I'm actually going to send you pins for like every single milestone that you complete. And I kind of joke about this that I'm like, I don't want you to get shiny object syndrome. So I'm literally going to send you shiny objects. Like <laughs> when you sign up, we're going to send you, I'm going to send you a t-shirt that says I'm a VIP. I'm going to, every time you, so the first thing Swag. we give you is calling my shot campaign. I'm going to send you the calling my shot pin. When you create your customer journey, I'm going to give you the yellow brick road pin. When you um, do your first video scripts, I'm going to give you the video scripting system pin. When you create your first titles, the titles pin. When you launch your YouTube channel. So that's, that's just like the first month that you can do. Um, and we're helping people to build their YouTube channels and to build their cash flow systems because I want to help you to build the content machine and the cash flow system to build you six and seven figures. So I'd love for you guys to join that. I'll put it in the chat right now. It's the vipcode.com. Um, and if you sign up right now, we'll also send you... Oh, that's I mean, feeling um, like a boy scout with those pins <laughs> and fun. If you sign up right now, we'll also give you that. I'm a VIP shirt. We also have like trophies and plaques and they're kind of behind me. Um, but like when you reach $10,000 a month, like we have plaques that we send out to you when you reach $50,000 a month, we have a trophy we send out to you when you reach a million dollars, like we know that this works. So that's why we've made it the most affordable at only $47 a month because it works if you do. And we just want to encourage you to do it. So like I'm sending you shiny objects every time you do. Um, so I'd love for you to join that. And it'll actually take you through every single step. Like all the pins that I showed you creating your customer journey, um, creating the video titles, um, doing your three content hooks per video and then filming. And then like, all you do is you film one day a month and it's like a one day a month strategy to generate leads for life. So, um, the VIP code.com would be a great place to start. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. See a real entrepreneur. She gets on here, tells the story. <laughs> now she's going to get you on her drip. Good job, Molly. 
Thank you. Okay, I think we got a couple more questions. Let's see, Gabriel. Yeah, just a just a quick one. Like, what's your YouTube channel name again? I'm gonna search it up right now. Yeah, you can look at Marley Jacks, youtube.com slash Marley Jacks. Awesome. And Wade. Hey Marley. Um, I was the one that works at the dentist office, so I'm trying to phase that out of my life filled with negativity. And how did you deal with the, like people coming at you negatively trying to doubt you when you were trying to become an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur. Oh. Yeah, I get it. Um, it's funny because I, I actually thought about that recently that I was like, I forgot that used to be one of my problems. Um, that I certainly had even people that, that love me, that, that have good intentions, that they just care about me, but they feel threatened by the risk that you're taking and what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. Like, you're about to step out of security. Well, well, what if you fail? Well, what if you succeed? I actually, I forgot that that used to be one of my things that unfortunately there's friends, there's family that just feel like, but you'd be safer if you were just, if you just stayed in this comfort zone with us, but then you just, if you believe in it, and it's almost like that quote, just be so good that they can't ignore you. At some point they're like, it's not a conversation anymore because you're just so determined and you show, you show them what's possible. And it can be a really great inspiration to them to, for you to be an example of stepping into that um, and showing them what's, what, what they could potentially create in their life too. So um, my biggest advice for you is just to like, thank them for their concern, know that they're coming hopefully from a, a place of love and good intentions and just be like, watch me. All right. Thank you. Love that. Allison. Hey, Marley. Thank hey. you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate the fact. All oh, you muted yourself. You're on Allison. mute, bro. Allison, you muted yourself. Come back. Mm -hmm. Hello there, Allison. <laughs> uh, did I do it? There yeah, you go. We're back. Okay. Sorry. I'm not no worries. I'm not good with Zoom. Okay. Um. Uh. Okay. I have one. I have one question regarding multiple channels because um, sometimes you have like um. Well, okay. Myself, I have different ideas on um. Like I do, I have a counseling business, but I also have like a spirituality like that I like to teach. And then I have, um, you know, other little things. Would you suggest to combine them all on one channel and just let, let you know, in the description or somewhere include all of the um, various subjects? Or do you suggest multiple channels? Counseling and spirituality sounds like there could be some crossover there. There 100% um, is, yes. Yeah. So that seems like it, it makes sense. I would just caution you on, like, there, that's, the idea is, ideally, you want to be speaking to the same audience. Um, so people that are interested in spirituality are probably interested in personal development or probably interested in counseling, perhaps. If you were to start doing some videos about beauty and hair and makeup, that should probably be a different channel because it's a different audience. Um, but right. it's also, we're reverse engineering this from your outcome. Like, what are you selling them into? Um, and I've also had clients come to me being like, hey, I'm going to have this kind of business. And then I'm also going to sell this. And I'm also going to do this. And I'm like, are you chasing too many rabbits? Because if you try to chase yeah. two rabbits, like one or both of them are going to get away. But if you're, if you can, you know, in your value ladder and your offerings, your products and services, if they're still speaking to the same audience, then I would say it's fine to have on the same channel. And if you have ideas that are different channels, I would kind of, I would maybe just pick first, like which one do you want to go all in on and get success with before you start another venture? Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Marley. You're welcome. All right. I know we're coming to the end. So I got one question for you to leave these guys with. Sure. If there was one solid thing of advice that you could give these guys on their entrepreneurial journey and becoming successful, one of your like most like sought after things that you was like, this is going to help everybody. What would you leave these guys with? Um, at the beginning of 2020, I was uh, going through a divorce and it was pretty public because I, I look my YouTube channel, my Instagram, like I'm, I'm a public person. And, um, so it was like the most 
pivotal time of my life. While also three weeks later, I was about to speak at Funnel Hacking Live, uh, an event that was like a dream come true. People, people are so it's like a, a bucket list thing to be able to to speak at this event and be showcased on this stage in front of 5,000 people. I shared the stage with Tony Robbins and Tom Bilyeu and Russell Brunson. It was a really exciting time for me while I was also going through one of the toughest moments in my life. Um, and I, I changed my name publicly. I shared what I was going through publicly. Um, and when I stood on that stage and I shared my presentation and taught people similar things to what I taught you today, um, I had a moment where I just kind of got vulnerable with them. And I said, um, you know, a few weeks ago, I actually debated if I was ready to get on this stage and, and share this with you. Um, but I had this realization that helping people doesn't stop just because your life isn't perfect. No one's is. And if I stopped sharing that message, it wouldn't just affect me. It would affect the people that are in this audience that, that want to hear my message. Um, so I want to encourage you to do the same and to, um, know your values strongly like my my values one of my strongest values is commitment um and one of the things that i say to myself a lot is commitment doesn't care how you feel like you might wake up tired or stressed or have an imposter syndrome but commitment doesn't care how you feel um and and you got to work that from the inside out it's who about who you're being to do the things you need to do to have what you want to have um commitment means getting up and playing even when you're hurt Commitment means you don't take your successes or your failures personally. So commitment doesn't care how you feel. I love that. I love that. And we got a couple more people that randomly just raised their hand. Do you have a hard stop right now? Or you got uh, like, let me just hand? check. I think I'm good. I would, I love Q and a, so I'd love to answer more questions. Let me just check. Oh, well quick. then let's go. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Let's All go. Right. All right. Marvin. Marvon. Marvon. <laughs> um, I remember because last uh, time I was on, Mike Mike said Marvin. You said Marvon, bro. I got you. <laughs> um, well, um, I have been in this since October, but I recently joined into the you know a uh, bigger program in February, and uh, I didn't really tell you know much of my family and like at all. Like I told like my brother. Um, so I've recent. I was recently told that. I was stupid for investing in this program because in the person who I idolized before this, my uncle, he said that it, cause you know, he does sales, but he works for AAA. So his is, you know, cars and insurance. Um, and so he, he recently called me like stupid for like investing in this. And so I just wanted to know from uh, Marcy, like, I mean, wait, hold on. Yeah. Marcy, like how, how did you deal with the, uh, doubts and the, um, you know, um, comments coming from closest family or just closest people. Having a chip on your shoulder is really good motivation to be like, really? Watch me. Um, I bet that Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and Steve Jobs, all of them had people saying, you're stupid to be investing in that they can go wipe their tears with million dollar bills. I love that. She told you to tell them to wipe their tears with million dollar bills. There's <laughs> I like that too. Honestly, wow. like that's, it's frustrating, especially when you're like, you know, you care about those people and you know, you want to hope that they're saying these things from, from a place of good intentions, but it's more of a, it's more a reflection of their fears and, and their risks. Like, when I, I still all the time have people that will reach out or say things that I'm like, that has nothing to do with me. That's, that's your own fear. And I'm just going to keep being an example for the people who need me. I had a client the other day who told me that, um, she had 4,000 views on this YouTube video, which means that it was ranking. People were finding it organically. Someone in the comments called her a dumbass, and she said it hurt her feelings and she deleted the video. And I was like, Oh my God. That video was ranking, people were finding you. Like, think of the other 3,999 people who watched that video that that needed what you had to say and you let one person bring you down. Like, it's just, it's not worth it. I had, I had an email the other day. I think I'm gonna start compiling. You know how Jimmy, is it Jimmy Kimmel? There's that talk show where they do like the celebrities read mean tweets. I think oh, we yeah. should have that in business. I had someone that emailed me the other day saying they didn't like my Facebook ad for some reason. 
And he was like, it's not too late to do something meaningful with your life, you know? And I was like, hmm, okay. I'll keep that in mind as I help my clients build businesses that are changing the world. Meanwhile, this person is a keyboard warrior who I've never met before. I don't know them. And so you also have to consider the source. Like, don't take advice from someone that you would trade places with. Yeah, we always tell these guys, be careful who you get your information from. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's great advice. You got to be the guardian of your mind. Chelly? Did I get that right? I've never met you before, so I'm not sure. Yes, that's right. Hello, how are, how are you? you Here we Hi. go, baby. Let's, let's hear your question. Okay, for... Um, I would like just to know, how do you be professional at the same time vulnerable? Because I love the way that you are so charismatic and so transparent. Mm -hmm. You're like fully authentic in yourself, yet at the same time, you're still open. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. Um, there's a quote from Brene Brown. She says to share the scars and not the open wounds, which to me, I kind of interpret as like, share it once you've processed it, share the, the things that are difficult once you're through them. But I also think there's a lot of value in tiptoeing around the open wounds and talking about it while you're in it to show people that they're not alone. Um, sometimes being vulnerable means sharing the things that everyone's going through, but no one's willing to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I was going through my divorce quite publicly, I had to make a decision of, do I want to hide in this and come back when I'm better? Like what, what is better? What is perfect? Like I'm not, I am willing to show up perfectly knowing that like, this is, this is part of my journey and that it might impact somebody else. Um, and so I, I decided, I was like, I don't want to be the divorce girl. I don't want that to be part of my story. And so I decided that I would control the narrative a bit by just being vulnerable and sharing what I was going through. Um, so by the, from the time that I announced my divorce and then spoke on stage at Funnel Hacking Live was only three weeks. And I shared part of my content just being like, I'm reintroducing them to myself to the public with a new name. And sometimes people call me by my old name, like my, my uh, married last name. And sometimes that hurts and it's hard. And um, I would just share those things and, and people would respond to it with understanding, with grace, with um, gratitude, because they were going through similar things. And not, not that it has to do anything with divorce, but just by seeing, you know, look at this person who's going through something difficult and still moving through it. Um, and so I kind of, you know, your vulnerability will make other people feel safe. It will give them permission. I don't recommend, you know, sharing anything that you're not emotionally willing or stable enough to talk about. Like I, there's a, there's a fine line between hot mess and powerful message. I'm not trying to get on a Facebook live and cry to show my vulnerability and emotion, but, um, there's, there's things that I can just share to say like, Hey, I'm going through this. It's tough. If anyone else is, you know, maybe we can talk about it or, or have you, can you relate um, and that, that creates a community too. So how do you say you go about that in, in the way that you do? Just by being real, um, by having enough self-awareness to know what, you know, I've actually, I've gone through times that were hard that I didn't know how to communicate. Um, that in that time, maybe I do go quiet because faking it wouldn't be authentic. Um, but I just share what's, what's real, what's going on in my day. And and how that relates to people. Like I, I maybe think about it as if like with your social media audi audience that you're still talking to a human. Like when, I, when I'm filming or when I'm doing a Facebook Live or any kind of video, I don't, I, like emotion, emotionally, mentally, I'm not talking to a camera. I have a picture in my mind of the person that I'm speaking to so that I can actually speak to them on a human level. Um, so think about even someone that you love and, and have, uh, admiration from maybe that even if it's like your best friend or your mom or something that when you put out a piece of content, you imagine that you're speaking to them. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's great advice. Everybody wants to be vulnerable, but it's hard to be vulnerable. So if you can have a way to relate it to something that makes it easier for you to be vulnerable and project what's going on, then by all means, right? Mm -hmm. All right, Raymond Thomas. 
can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Hey, yeah, thank you for your time and um, dropping these gems for us. I have a question for you. I'm well. First, I'm definitely going to get the VIP though <laughs> to learn more about this. I have a son that's like nine years old, and he wants to get in YouTube. Um, he interested in these puppets and want to start shows and everything. What is your What is your thoughts on that? Um, I think that it's a cool creative outlet and I have friends too that say their kids want to be on YouTube and, and I think there's no harm in letting them start the process of like, Hey, here's the camera or the iPad or whatever that you're going to film on and see how far they can take it. Like, are they actually going to film the video? Are they actually going to follow through with it? And you could always put it on a YouTube channel as unlisted. If, if there's like a security concern, uh, okay. well, I would suggest like give them the creative outlet. I remember when I was a kid, I used to steal my dad's video camera and make like news reports with my cousins and we would pretend we were reporting the news. Um, and it was just a fun outlet. We didn't have anywhere, YouTube didn't exist at the time to post it anywhere, but like it was great creativity. So if, uh, if your kid is gonna make it and then when they get to the point of being able to post it, then you can judge from there if it's gonna mm. be listed or private or whatever. Gotcha. Good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Right on, right on. Does anybody, we've got a very vulnerable, amazing, yes. very successful woman here that can answer a lot of the questions that you have when it comes to being the best version of yourself. Is there anybody else that has any other questions before we wrap this up? I have a question. Let's go. So I'm recently going into phone sales because like I'm so tired of the nine to five drab job idea. I'm 21. I got over the concept like at 19 years old. I was like, what can I do to possibly get out of this? I need something. And so um, I was looking into phone sales and entrepreneurship, but all the things, all the ideas you're presenting sound very good and like very, uh, like applied to my life very well, but I don't know how to get started in that field, you know? I had to create traffic or like, I know what I want to sell. I know what I want to create a business on, but I don't know, you know, how to actually start making money or even like start the business itself, you know? Do, do you know how I would phone, go about that? What was do you that? want to do phone sales to sell products for other people or to sell your own products? Um, right now I'm going into selling products for other people because currently that sh that's a high ticket field, high in demand. And so I want to take advantage of that to make money to start my own business. Cause to me, businesses require a lot of money to get started and to fund and just like just manage overall. But I'm like, how can I get started into that field with little money without like say a million, $2 million budget? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, most, most entrepreneurs I know don't start businesses with money. They, they're not investing very much. Um, and we're all bootstrapping it. Like I started my business. I probably had whatever money I was making from dental hygiene, but I was pretty like mm -hmm. paycheck to paycheck. Um, I started my business organically. So for you, I would recommend just like finding, maybe you find a, a client or a company that you want to do phone sales for and take what you learn from them to become part of your content. Like you documenting your journey of what you're, what you're doing or what you're learning in sales. Um, and who knows, like maybe one day you'll be teaching sales or you'll have people that you train to become phone closers, sales people. Um, cause that, it's a very lucrative business and, and it's only growing, like people need more phone sales. Mm -hmm. Um, so it might be a really great learning experience to, to like, to work for a company, to have a, a client that you can do phone sales for and, um, yeah, use that experience to be part of your content. Rose. We'll get the recording to catch was, you're selling with, to be a product. Would you have to? I'm sorry. You, uh, fro you froze for a while, so hopefully you got my answer. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I, I did get the answer. Okay, good. But I want to ask a, a small question. To say if the item I was selling was going to be a product, would I have to kind of wait until I generate a little more income to start producing products? And how would I go about doing that? How would you produce products if you want to sell items like fashion or something cosmetic in your business? I have no way. I, I'm not in that industry, so I can't really answer that well. Um, okay. But in networking, you'll probably be able to meet the right people who could point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Multi-level right. marketing. Well, thank you. Okay. It's all the cosmetics you want. 
Who? I was just saying multi-level marketing for one of those companies that sells that stuff. Okay. Free. All right. All right. Um, All right, guys. Marley. I'm a weird dude with the moon and the stars. So I just want to know because now that we know so much about you, what sign are you? Scorpio. Scorpio. Makes awesome. sense. I'm a fuck. Awesome. That makes oh, a lot God. That makes a lot of sense. Does it? I see. I'm a Gemini. You seem like that though, right? right? Scorpio, very like driven, kind of stubborn, but like also very loyal. You have that like loyalty to your clients, to your brand. I mean, you know, these guys, look, you got all these guys engaged. They're very, very intrigued with what's going on. I'm always scanning the room to see. And so it's so great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, guys, let's give Marley a huge round of applause. Marley, thank you so much for getting on here. Thank you. Dropping gems and being vulnerable and being real with us. It was yes. such a great opportunity. And I know I can see all the messages that I'm getting on my regular message and in the comments, everyone's, they just loved it. So thank you so much. And we look forward to connecting with you soon. Yes, thank you guys so I much. I added you on Facebook. I'm going to message you. I want to connect with you. Yes, let's do it. Guys, what up? It's your boy, Mike Barron. Thank you for checking out the YouTube channel. Truly appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you forget, I'm going to come to this computer right now, and I'm going to close you my damn self. Let's go. I'll see you at the top, y'all.